General, thank you once again. Thanks for coming to the VOA. It's an honor. You just praised the Afghan security forces, uh, calling them the best in the region, perhaps the special forces. But they lost Kunduz, and they have high rate of casualties. Mm -hmm. How do you explain this? It's a very tough fight that they're in. This year, 2016, uh, was interesting for a couple of reasons. One, we saw for the first time the enemy uh, attempted to seize cities in Afghanistan. Now, of course, they had done this once in October of 15 for a brief amount of time. But in 2016, they attempted eight times to seize cities. So this was a new dimension to the fighting this year. It's important to remember, though, that the Afghan security forces prevailed. So my praise for the Afghan security forces is based not only on my uh, long experience with those forces, with my respect for their leaders and their soldiers and their fighting abilities, but the way they handled a difficult year in 2016. They were tested and they prevailed. General, but you also agreed that the Taliban now controls 15% more territory than 2015. Why are they gaining territory? This uh, territory is no longer controlled by the government, but this was a conscious decision by the government to concentrate forces around the population. So the government now secures two-thirds of the population of the country. The Taliban controls less than 10. The balance is contested. And so it's important to remember that even though the ANDSF may withdraw from a certain area to concentrate somewhere else. This doesn't mean that this area has fallen under enemy control. In fact, it, it falls into what we call a contested category, meaning neither side uh, controls it one way or the other. But, but just to go back into Inspector General's report, mm -hmm. it does indicate clearly that 15% more gain territory-wise mm -hmm. have been given to Taliban. Yeah, we are Not differentiating with the contested parts. Yeah, we're we're differentiating between uh, territory and population. So the Afghan security forces have focused on the population versus the territory. And so, uh, as we know, many of the areas in Afghanistan are very sparsely populated. And so, rather than have military outposts in remote areas, they have focused on the areas where the greatest number of people live. And as we have seen uh, in the past year, the population in the urban area is growing. So Afghan security forces have concentrated their efforts in 2016 on those areas. It turns out this was a wise decision given the enemy's attempt to take cities. So yes, there has been an adjustment in the more rural and less populated areas, but there's been uh, greater security provided in the most populous areas. General, in your testimony to Senate, uh, you agreed that more troops are needed in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And President Trump may wish to authorize a short-term increase in U.S. troops in Afghanistan. What are your thoughts, and where would you use the extra troops? The additional troops will be used for additional advising. So we ended our combat mission at the end of 2014, and that part of our mission is over. However, uh, in terms of advising, we currently advise at the core level. What we would like to do is advise below the core level, at the brigade level. So additional soldiers would perform duties as advisors with Afghan units at the brigade level around the country. I may follow up on this question again, but it's important to ask that you admitted that Russia is supporting Taliban and uh, Taliban or affiliated with Al-Qaeda. Uh, do you agree that Russia is actually supporting terrorism indirectly in that region or inside Afghanistan? Yeah, Russia has been legitimizing the Taliban and supporting the Taliban. And the extent of that support is still uh, unclear. Uh, but the fact is, by supporting Taliban, they're supporting a group which is connected to terrorism and enables terrorists. And we all know of the connections between the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. So it's very surprising to see Russia supporting the Taliban, an organization that supports terrorists and is also heavily involved in narco-trafficking. To, to, to follow up on that, there is a conference being held in Moscow mid this month. And uh, they have invited Pakistan, China, 
Iran, and even India, plus Afghanistan's mm -hmm. delegations to talk there, while U.S. representative is not present. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? We, Why are they doing that? Are we, they helping you? We believe that the peace and reconciliation effort in Afghanistan needs to be led by Afghans, not by foreign entities. They may participate in this, but fundamentally, this is an Afghan reconciliation, and it needs to be led by the Afghans, by the government of Afghanistan. So when uh, an outside power like Moscow uh, decides to convene a meeting and not invite the Afghans, this is not progressing the cause of peace. It's, it's encouraging that they have invited Afghanistan to participate in this, but it's long overdue. And this is not an Afghan-led reconciliation initiative. So I would say we support Afghanistan's lead in this area, not the lead of another uh, power or organization. Thank you, General. You have also indicated that Iran is supporting and arming um, Shia groups mm -hmm. and Taliban at the same time. Do you agree that Iran and Russia uh, are following the same policies in Afghanistan? And do you have intelligence to prove this? Well, uh, I won't, won't discuss intelligence uh, with the open media, however. Uh, I, I believe that, in fact, they are supporting these groups. Uh, the relationship with Iran is more complex than, than that with Russia, my, my opinion, my observation. Why? Because Iran and Afghanistan are neighbors. They, they need a, a relationship beyond uh, the security dimension. There's economic cooperation, uh, agreements over water, trade, uh, counter-narcotics efforts. You mentioned uh, our concerns that we share about the arming of the Taliban and the recruitment of Afghan Shia to fight against uh, ISIL and Daesh uh, in Syria and Iraq. These are big concerns, but there needs to be a relationship between these two governments. I know both governments are pursuing that. Uh, and we would like to see the relationship focus on these non-security matters, on the economic cooperation and trade. And when we say arming Taliban, it's, it's just a little complicated for our viewers when they ask mm -hmm. questions from us. Arming Taliban, where? Which part of Afghanistan? We think that in the Farah area, the Taliban that have been making threats against Farah province and Farah city uh, have been equipped by the Iranians. We also believe that in Shindan uh, and even, even up as far as Herat, that in the western parts of Afghanistan, we are seeing Iranian influence in the Taliban in those areas. Just neighbor of the Iran which is a bigger neighbor and particularly a good neighbor to Afghanistan people in the past decades, Pakistan. For the past 15 years, uh, we have just heard and Pakistan has remained uh, to be so-called the free enemy. Mm -hmm. What do you think and why cannot Pakistan be a friend or an enemy? Mm -hmm. We all hope for a change in Pakistan behavior. They, they have uh, obvious concerns about in their relationship with India. Traditionally, they have feared that Afghanistan would become a launching pad for attacks in their rear. Uh, we have assured them that as long as the international coalition is working with Afghanistan and Afghanistan becomes a peaceful, stable country, that they have nothing to fear from Afghanistan. And that uh, certainly the international community would never uh, support such an attack on Pakistan. So if they will work with us together, and we help to bring stability and peace to Afghanistan, this is in Pakistan's interest. We also mentioned the economic uh, dimension of this relationship. If Pakistan and Afghanistan and Central Asia join together economically, uh, this also would be to the benefit of Pakistan. So we're hopeful that these uh, logical arguments uh, would uh, be convincing. We've been working for Pac uh, with Pakistan for uh, close to 15 years now on our common interests. I do want to acknowledge the suffering of the Pakistan people too at the hands of terrorists. And they have lost many, many people. They continue to suffer significant terrorist attacks in Pakistan. But what we'd like to see is cooperation with Pakistan against all terrorists uh, and not allowing some insurgents to operate uh, from their soil against Afghanistan. Rather, we take equal action against all terrorist and insurgent groups, whoever they are and wherever they are. But when you talk about people of Afghan uh, Pakistan sacrificed, being sacrificed to the terrorist activities, it's, it's another discussion. Mm -hmm. But also, 
This war never ends in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Quote from Afghan people. You fight there. American forces are fighting there. We have thousands of fallen soldiers from international communities. Every month, thousands of Afghan mm -hmm. forces are either injured or they are fallen. Mm -hmm. Why do you think those sanctuaries believed mm -hmm. to be factories of creating mm -hmm. those extremists who comes into Afghanistan, attacks mm -hmm. your forces, Afghan forces, Afghan civilians, are not going to be shut down? What is, what is so important that you could put as a pressure or you mm -hmm. cannot put as a pressure on Pakistani side? Yeah, th this is an important question that you ask here. And this is a question that I will be discussing with my chain of command and the new administration. Uh, and this, this, I believe, as you have pointed out, is the most important factor in bringing about peace and stability in Afghanistan. We must have pressure on these enemy sanctuaries that are external to the country in Pakistan in order uh, for us to have a successful outcome. We think that if this if these sanctuaries are removed, then the Afghan people can arrive at a legitimate reconciliation, uh, settle their differences, and move forward peacefully. And this is in everyone's interest. So just, just a question. If it is believed that Iran, Russia, Pakistan are arming, supporting Taliban, mm -hmm. while on the other hand, U.S. is fighting oppositions and extremists and Taliban uh, by the support of Afghan uh, forces. Uh, do you think Afghanistan is yet again uh, the victim of another great game in that region? Yeah, we hope this is not the case. We have great respect for the Afghan people. We deeply appreciate their hospitality and allowing us to come to Afghanistan and fight alongside your forces against these terrorists. Our goal is to see a reconciliation and a peaceful outcome in Afghanistan and a stable and peaceful life for the people of Afghanistan. I am concerned about the actions of outside actors uh, inside Afghanistan, but it's important to remember that this year in 2016, you had uh, all the nations of the coalition, 39 nations, agreed to continue to fight alongside Afghans and to, and to serve with Afghans and support Afghans uh, for the next four years. At the Brussels Donor Conference, another 75 nations and other organizations came together and pledged $15.2 billion in development needs. So Afghanistan enjoys strong international support from the military coalition and from the international donor community. So even though there are those nations that you have mentioned, Russia, Iran, Pakistan, who act uh, to undermine Afghan stability, uh, there are many more nations that want to work with the Afghan people to bring about peace and stability in Afghanistan. Just, just, just to, uh, I need a quick answer on this. Um, this, this trust issue, especially mm -hmm. between Islamabad and Kabul. Mm -hmm. Pakistan is your ally, U.S. ally. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan is a U.S. ally in combating terrorism, and they don't trust each other. Mm -hmm. You, you talked about the donors conference in Warsaw mm -hmm. and. The other one. You remember that President Ghani directly rejected mm -hmm. the contribution from Pakistan and it sa he said, I don't need your money, go spend it on a honest fight mm -hmm. uh, against terrorism. You, as the liaison between these two mm -hmm. nations, what can you do to mm -hmm. help them overcome this mistrust? Mm -hmm. What is to be done to help them trust each other as a beginning for a honest cooperation. I was very encouraged last year when I arrived in Afghanistan. The quadrilateral peace process was ongoing uh, between Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, the United States, uh, seeking to get the Taliban to the table. But it's did now. It, right. But at the time, this, this demonstrates there is potential to get such a process going. So it is possible to have a trust and a functioning uh, relationship between the two nations. It has occurred in the past. Now, sadly, as you point out, you're correct. Uh, this process is, uh, is finished uh, because the Taliban rejected uh, the peace process. They launched a devastating attack inside Kabul, killing innocent people, and declared war on the people of Afghanistan. So this revealed the true nature of Mullah Mansour. We killed him for these reasons. 
Uh, and now we hope to see the new Taliban leadership reconsider. It's encouraging to us to know that inside the Taliban there is a conversation ongoing about the future of this war. And despite the irreconcilables at the top uh, talking about continuing the struggle, it's encouraging to know that there are many other leaders inside the Taliban who see that this is a losing cause and that better to join Afghanistan, rejoin society, heal the wounds of war, bring about peace and reconciliation, and a better life for all Afghans. So this is the direction we'd like to go. And we will certainly, uh, speaking for myself, of course, in my, in my role, and I know our diplomats are equally committed to this, we will try everything we can uh, to achieve a functioning uh, relationship that results in greater stability and peace for the people of Afghanistan. Speaking of Taliban, and to just follow up on your previous answer, um, you just mentioned that the combat mission, and it's clear that ended in 2014, but you do uh, counterterrorism in Afghanistan. Taliban are not designated as terrorist mm -hmm. organization. If the new administration under Mr. President Trump uh, designated Taliban as terrorist, what will change in your mission? What would change really on the ground? Yeah, so the, the Department of State in the United States are the ones who designate terrorist organizations. There is a series of uh, tests that they put these uh, organizations through. Uh, as you point out, the Taliban have not been designated. However, they are an enabler of terrorists. So they have relationships with many terrorist organizations, including Al-Qaeda, lashkar e taiba and others. The Haqqani Network is a designated terrorist organization, and the Haqqanis act in affiliation uh, with the Taliban. Indeed, Siraj Haqqani is the deputy of the Taliban. So there are close connections between the Taliban and many terrorist organizations. Uh, we will target uh, the, these people who uh, threaten our soldiers or who threaten to undermine the Afghan government or the Afghan security forces, regardless of whether they're designated or not. Uh, we will go after them. This um, question that you pose is an important one for the next administration to consider, and it will be part of our conversation with them as the uh, weeks unfold. Um, uh, on our social media, uh, which is very vast in Afghanistan, which is number one in Afghanistan, uh, our viewers have these questions to you. They say if, let, let's quote them, if U.S. wants to end this war, mm -hmm. uh, U.S. can eliminate Taliban, whatever, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, mm -hmm. in a month. What is your explanation to this conspiracy theory of Afghans there? Yeah, uh, I wish it were so easy to eliminate uh, terrorist groups within a month. Uh, it is, in practice, more difficult than that. I don't want to get into specific uh, uh, methods and techniques, but I would point out, of the 20 terrorist groups operating in this region in the last year, we have killed the emirs of five of these organizations. Uh, this requires a lot of work, uh, a lot of military capacity, and we are committed to maintain this pressure on these terrorist groups. Uh, but uh, eliminating uh, any terrorist organization within a month is, uh, is uh, very difficult to do. And I'd say it's not something that we've done with any terrorist organization, but will we this, will. Will this war end? Wasn't 15 years enough? I, I believe it will, and I believe it's going to end well for the Afghan people with uh, peace and reconciliation. I know that your national leadership is committed to this. We are committed to this. Uh, we are with you at the Warsaw Summit this summer. We just committed another four years to stay with you, and all the indications from my chain of command are that we will continue with this very strong support to the people of Afghanistan. And I want to say Thank you to the people of Afghanistan who have supported us. And thank you to the brave soldiers and police of Afghanistan who daily put their lives on the line for the security of their country uh, and, this, and the, uh, who work so closely with us. We you have deeply been in Afghanistan so many times, General. Sorry to cut you off. This is more into a personal level of a question. Uh, you have been there so many times. You have been there for long. Uh, have you also developed... Uh, a personal connection to Afghanistan, to Absolutely. the Afghans. Absolutely. I have deep respect for the Afghan people. I've never met more hardworking, more pious uh, people anywhere uh, on earth. They have had hard lives. 
yet they are generous and gracious, will give you the last food off their table if you are their guest. Uh, I tell the American people whenever I meet them that our Afghan brothers and sisters are worthy of our commitment. They share our goals. They want a better life for them and their children. They reject terrorism. They are our allies and our friends in this part of the world. We could have no better friend. And so we need to continue to support the Afghan people in this struggle. It's a common struggle, and that together we'll be victorious. General, thank you, thank you so sir. much for your You're time. You're very welcome. Thanks, that was an honor talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.